Welcome into another edition of McCrady and Siski, powered by Rain, Total Body Fuel. I'm Neil. That's Tyler. What it is, sir? How are you? You did your open before we. Did oh, the we didn't file. do an audio file. No, got to do the file here in a second. I'll open yours for the file. Okay. <laughs> How we living, sir? I'm all right. I'm good. Just uh, getting getting through a Monday. Got a got a busy week ahead. You know, stuff going on. It's, it's Easter week. It is. All week long. Be nice to have uh, have everybody under the same roof this weekend. Looking forward to that. That'd be fun. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can talk the wife into going to uh, service on Saturday night. Oh, why? Sunday, uh, Sunday Easter service on Sunday is just yeah. Too many people. Yeah. So all of us heathens show up on Sunday Easter. Well, Sunday. it's getting me to go to one of those services is like the you know the the. the I call them the rock star services. Okay. The contemporary services where everybody stands yes. and sings 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 some more. And then when you get through singing, you sing it again. They put the lyrics up and you just keep singing them. Yep. That's my, that's what I do. See, I don't like that. Which one would you rather do? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a traditionalist. I like the traditional service. I do too. And, I, and the I, rest I, of my family doesn't. And so it ends up where we just kind of don't much. I grew up Baptist, but I believe, like, um, I need when when someone preaches, it, it's about the preacher. I need somebody that I can like listen to mm-hmm. and, and kind of understand. Mm-hmm. Here's um, my thing: it's hard. To, th- those are hard to find. Your favorite song ever? What's your give me a give me a song favorite song of all time? Yeah, sure, no judgment. I'm making a um, point. I don't really care. Like, probably "Free Bird" by Leonard Skinner. All right, let's. Long song. I'm gonna prove my point. Oh, we're gonna see how long it is. Depends on what version. 14 minutes, 28 seconds. How long is the full version of Freebird? <laughs> 908. 908. Okay. 908. And that's a long song. It is. All right. I really like Prince. I do too. Okay. I, I love When Doves Cry. Okay. How long is When Doves Cry? When that 347. Okay. Okay. Leonard Skinner and Prince. Different artists. <laughs> they are. But I think we could both say that generally people believe them to be elite artists. Agree. I, okay. would, I would concur. All right. We, Eric Clapton. Concur. Do they ever play 20 minute songs? A song for 20 minutes. No, they do not. So why do you have Rockstar up there playing 20 minutes of the same song? Hey, let's sing it again. This time, let's sing it. This time I'd sing it. Well, where I go doesn't do 20 minutes of the same song. I just don't. They like, may do 20 minutes of songs. I just don't. So you're just standing there. Songs you don't know, it's not my thing. Okay. It's just not my thing. And so I don't like going at all, frankly. I have a tough time. So my wife grew up Catholic. And when we go in, like, I have a tough time in the Catholic service when they go to reap like it. It feels very seancey, you know, they're. Mm-hmm. You repeat and repeat and repeat. They say things to you and you repeat back to them. Yeah. Uh, that I can't get into. Really? I need like, I need uh church, church. See, I think you could shorten the thing to 30 minutes and people like me would get a lot out of it. Let me show up. Let's do yeah, what we I need to do. do the sermon. Get I'll, the sermon and then let's go. Yeah, I can sing a couple like, of songs. And like, let's say, sing Amazing Grace and we'll see, get to the deal. Or, let's go. or even, even just show up, give me the sermon and then tell people, hey, you want to stay for the songs? Cool. You don't? Awesome. Because I'd be like, okay, peace. I'll go get a coffee. Yeah. I'm out the door. And I'd be good. But instead, we have to do songs and songs and songs and songs. And then people start doing the, I don't know, I'm not judging. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not comfortable. And so I end up leaving church in a horrible mood. My favorite church. And so, we I, so I just kind of stop. Yeah, my favorite church. And that's we, before I get into the COVID reaction, which will get you at another spot. But anyway. <laughs> we haven't made it five minutes yet, Neil. <laughs> Got another 60 seconds. <laughs> Yeah, I, know. Uh, um, I, was, I was careful. Um, my favorite church so anywhere we've ever lived was uh, Central Baptist Church in Jonesboro. Doctor Archie Mason, uh, they he was really good. I, that's by far my favorite. Um, I I enjoyed. Would not miss a service. Enjoyed it. Great message. Um, he's a stud. Great family. Actually, ended up coaching his kid at Arkansas State um, at the end. So. Um, but just great family, great, great preacher. I enjoyed that one. You would like, you would like 
I, I think it depends on the church. Yeah. I think some of the, I'm with you, some of the songs get a little bit out there. But the one we go to here, we go to Pine Lake, it's not bad. It's not overly yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. But I know exactly what you're talking about. You know about. what I mean? Yes. Yeah. I, I avoid that too. All right. Let's do it. <clears throat> so you're going to open Yeah, I'll open yours. Okay. I, I prematurely opened my can. Welcome into episode 161 of McCready and Siski, powered by Rain Total Body Fuel. I'm Neil McCready. That is Tyler Siski here on this. Thank you, sir. Here on this Monday afternoon, final Monday of March. Guess what we get to get from you at some point in time this week? This is April. This is April. Are you going to do it? Oh, yeah. Okay. You skip. You've been skipping. I had skipped. So now I, that you're back I, with the tournament. I so. pointed out the other day that we were on the 24th day of March and that April was around the corner as it usually is after March. It is. It is. Neil, I'm rocking with the Valencia orange today. Yes. You know, it's kind of like a sun kissed in a can in case yeah. you haven't heard. Yeah. But I like it. I actually prefer, I'm starting to get like taste profiles as far as the time of day with my storms. Mm hmm. I actually enjoy the Valencia orange in the morning. Like, so if I had to have one in the morning, it goes great with a biscuit. Oh, really? Just stop by my, my spot up here at Rascals and hit the, hit the road for baseball. And, you know, grab a biscuit, a little Valencia orange. Pretty good. Okay. Pretty good. The citrus zest that you have there. Yes, I have the citrus zest. That's an early afternoon for me. Okay. Early afternoon. Along with the kiwi, this is this is tangerine grapefruit. Uh, yes, so it kind of starts one way, finishes the other, which is fascinating. Yes, it's pretty interesting how they do it's that. It's interesting on your palate. Interesting on your palate. It's kind of just like that Camus that Bob got us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but anyway, um, the Cooper Chevrolet chat Neil is already bumping. Um, I'm gonna get you a bottle of Camus one of these days. I'm just gonna. I'm going to splurge and buy you a bottle of Camus. <laughs> Drink it the whole bottle live on the show? <laughs> let's hope not. No. because You know what we need to do? For the draft show, let's get a bottle of Camus. Okay. And you and I will crush a bottle of Camus for the draft show. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. It'll be easy. Um, but the Cooper Chevrolet chat's already bumping, so we got a super chat we'll get to you in a second. But, hey, you can get 1.9% APR on select Car Bravo certified pre-owned Chevys, Buicks, GMCs, Fords, Toyotas, Nissans, Dodges, Jeeps, and more. Make sure you call area code 256-236-4481. That's 256-236-4481. And tell them that McCready and Siski sent you. And I should have told you at the very beginning that we're brought to you by Rain Total Body Fuel. 300 milligrams of natural caffeine, BCAAs, electrolytes. It's got zero sugar. What it does have is what you need to push your limits and achieve your goals. You can check them out on Instagram at Rain Body Fuel to learn more. Hopefully our guy Bob Rucato is listening in or watching at this time. And if so, Bob, what's up, my man? He probably watched a little bit later. He's in a he's in a company thing right now. He was doing some yeah, stuff going he's on. He's busy. He is super busy these days. But I guess I can say it. I am getting to, getting to kill a bucket list item with my man Bob here in a couple of weeks. Going to Augusta for the third round for Saturday. That's really cool. I'm not even Dude, a, I'm, I'm not even a golf guy, and I think that's really cool. I'm so um, <clears throat> I don't even know if I told my wife I was I'm half joking. I said make sure you up that life insurance policy because I don't have much left. I said if Tiger make if Tiger play which he's supposed to play but if he plays and makes the cut makes the cut cuz one of my bucket list items was to see Tiger play live. I have attempted to do this 3 times. Okay. And he has missed the cut one time and withdrew for injury. I've gone on Saturday. So if he makes the cut and is there on Saturday so I get to knock out two birds with one stone, that day I, wife may need to may need up the old life insurance. Yeah, you start checking the boxes. Super Bowl is one of the very few things I got left. Have you never been to the Super Bowl? Never been. Huh, I would have thought you would have been. Never been to the Super Bowl. Okay. So that's on that's on there. So I've done pretty much everything else. I got I've, to go to the World Series a couple years ago. Yeah, I've been to the World Series. That was on there. I've never been to NBA Finals. I've been to NBA Western Conference Finals okay. a couple of times. I've been to an NFC Championship game. I've been to a World Series game. Been to a fo college football national championship game. Covered it. Yep. Um, 
Never covered a Final Four. I've not ever been to Omaha. Let Chase do that. I stayed back and manned the fort. You did. Um, so, yeah, I've covered a bunch of stuff. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm juiced. Um, <clears throat> we got a little weekend planned out of it, but I'm I'm – I'm more than juiced. So yeah, that's I'm awesome. To go. That I mean, like I said, I'm not even a golf person, and I think that's super cool. So I can only imagine how that's really cool for people who love golf. Yeah, I'm a, I'm I'm juiced. All right, Neil. Um, this weekend, I know it's hard to imagine, but this weekend, the McCray and Siski official sponsored team, which is I'm joking, but the official podcast team, the Oxford Royals. Yeah, were in action. And when you go to travel it was cold. baseball, it's cold this weekend. You know what happens when you go to travel baseball, Neil? What happens? You come back with some travel baseball icks. Icks. Yeah. So yeah. we got every time we go, we're going, we're going to put them together. So got two icks for you this week. Okay. And you know, I just kind of let them happen organically. I don't force them. Of course not. They 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 come to me. Um, the travel baseball ick uh, segment is getting so popular that people are coming to me with their icks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to be careful. To let gotta be, be careful. Your icks. Yes. They gotta be my icks being careful. Um, and we've had, we had some people listen to the show that are concerned that the icks are about them. So we, we have that. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, sometimes there's an expression. <laughs> so if, you gotta be careful. If the shoe fits, <laughs> you gotta be careful with the icks. All right. So my first ick is there's a thing called free tournaments. That's F-R-E-E, -E, free. Okay. And, Neil, free tournaments aren't free, <laughs> okay, in case you're curious. So what they do is it's a it's an ingenious uh, ploy by the tournament directors. They say that the tournament is free. There's no entrance fee required by the team. Right. Carson played in one of those soccer. Mm -hmm. So instead, what they do is they jack up the entrance, fee, <laughs> entrance uh, gate fee on you. Okay. So if you go there and your gate fee is 10 bucks. It is on on paper. It's probably a free tournament, and when you go to a tournament that's that's fees are paid, it's probably more like you know between five and seven bucks okay. fee. So that's how you know, um, and they they kind of jack up the prices. So it's kind of like uh, taxes. You're gonna pay one way or the other. So they're gonna get you at the gate, or they're gonna get you an entrance fees that the parents have to pay anyway. So they're getting you one way or the other. So free tournaments aren't free. That's it. One, and then Neil, you're gonna get a kick out of this one. I can't wait to get your response on this one. I've been waiting for two days on this. Okay. I saw something. I, I've been – I've seen a lot of travel baseball over my years, Neil. Hell, I even coached it for a couple of years with my, with my other son. I saw something Saturday that I have never seen. All right, so this particular team, they're from northeast Mississippi. I'm just going to say that too. Okay. okay. All right. This particular team was the home team, okay? Okay. So let's call them the Pelotons. Okay, Pelotons. Right, the Pelotons are the home team. Okay. They are beating the Hydros. Okay. 14 to 6. Okay. All right? All Just right. a few minutes left. The Pelotons are the home team. And the Pelotons are the home team, and they're up by eight runs. They're up 14 to 6. Okay. So the Hydros are up to bat in the top of the last inning, and they get them three up, three down. And the, the umpire goes, ball game. Okay? Makes sense. Makes sense, right? Yeah. <laughs> you with me? So far, so far you're with me, so right? So far, I'm with the umpire too. He's right. Yeah, he's there's right. There's no reason for the home, <laughs> there's no reason for the Pelotons to hit. The game is over. The Hydros don't get to hit anymore. You have the lead. Therefore, the contest is complete. The yep. victor has been determined. Yep. The victor has been determined. Yes. So let the boys have their juice box, shake hands, and let's go. Let's get. Hey, and it, every once in a while, you get a little pack of crackers or some cookies, and sure. let's go. Right. Yeah, it's time. All right, eight U baseball now. The coaches from the Pelotons who were, instead of winning their game, they come out and start to argue. I wouldn't say argue. They were not being ugly. They were just nicely protesting with the umpire that there's still three minutes left to go in this game. And they should be allowed to hit. And the umpire but, says, but but, but, but... but there's a limit on innings, right? Uh, it's time limit. And innings, but you rarely get to it at that age. It's always time. Okay. All right. So the coach who's winning, who just won the game, and has won 14-6, to six, wants his kids to hit. And his reasoning was because they needed to score more runs for seeding in the tournament. 
because run differential is the is the second run differential runs allowed or on the seating for for the tournament. So we're gonna run the score up. We're beating the shit out of this team, and we're gonna run the score up even more so we can get seated better in the play in the bracket. <laughs> <sighs> Okay. Where, that happened. Where was this tournament? It was in New Albany. What's it called? Uh, I don't know. All right. Call it they got weird names for it. Call it the March Madness tournament. I'm gonna call it the New Albany Invitational. Okay. The eight under portion of the New Albany Invitational. <laughs> <clears throat> when you're worried about seeding in any in any age. <laughs> No, that's me. When you're worried about seeding in the eight and under category of the new Albany Invitational. There's only six teams, too. I forgot to tell you that part. <laughs> on a cold, windy weekend in North Mississippi, you, you need to get a life. You need to completely reorganize your priorities. You need to take a look in the mirror, cut the mirror, cut yourself with the mirror. And then as you bleed, think, how did I get here? <coughs> and then this is a weekend where we talk about resurrection. This is a chance for you to resurrect what's left of the carcass of your life and do better. <laughs> You're welcome. Was that sponsored by Cole Walters? You know what? That's life advice. <laughs> Presented by Cole Walters of State Farm Insurance. Cole is licensed in auto, home, life, health, business, and pet insurance for the whole state of Georgia. But maybe he could refer you to somebody in Mississippi if you're out there. Contact Cole at 706-525-7850. You can also find him at ColeWaltersInsurance.com. Seating? Yeah, for seating. Who cares? The you, kids don't care. You want the kicker? Is they they didn't move them uh, they didn't move anywhere they still were the, were the same seed. The poor umpire, you know the umpire looked at him like coach. Oh, I would have en- I would have ended it. I wouldn't have even allowed him to do it. I mean, like did he didn't allow him to play for three more minutes? Did they? Yeah, no he 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 let him play three more minutes. They scored two more runs in three minutes. It's so stupid. Yeah, and the coach was like, you know, it was just it was bad, bad for the deal. Yeah, that's um. <clears throat> That's what gives some of that a bad name. It really is. And it's like, they're eight. I, I, t- time out. I've coached, I coached them all the way up to their 15. I would have never, like, I would have never even, cons- I, I didn't care about the seating because once you get in the real tournament play, like when they start, because it's still coach pitch. It's not even kid pitch yet. So when they actually get into kid pitch, it doesn't matter what your seat is. When you go out there, everybody throws their ace the first the first uh, round. So it doesn't matter. You got to face them anyway. It's it's dumb. I, it really bothered me. So anyway, all right, Neil, we got some NFL news today. Yeah, I saw this. I wondered, I wondered what your th- thoughts on this would be. Um, this was a big topic this morning, kind of all over the place. Yeah, a, a lot of talk on the talking heads. A lot of talk on the social media. Yeah. So the NFL. Uh, it was, I actually had this written down to talk about on Thursday during a call-in show, but we never, <laughs> never got to it. Um, we got talking about all kinds of other stuff, but it was a proposal at that time. And they voted this morning that the owners unanimously voted, uh, to eliminate the hip drop tackle in football. Mm-hmm. Now everybody's like, no big deal, but here's the big deal is it's probably the first time a quote unquote safety rule was also the NFLPA has been fighting against taking this out of the game. Um, so here's my here's my deal. I understand that the hip drop tackle is uh, dangerous to to an extent. Um, it's not always dangerous. It's just dangerous sometimes. But you, in my opinion, I understand that. I get. I do understand the thought behind it because the owners they're trying to protect their investment mm-hmm. because who gets hip drop tackled on skill players. Yes. Okay. Wide and receivers, that's where tight they, ends, running backs, quarterbacks, too. quarterbacks. So that's where they spend their money. So they're trying well, to protect the people their that come to the games and that's what they come to coming watch to see the, that is correct. Offensive players score points. So I, I understand the owner's perspective on that. 
Now let's talk about the actual football part of it. Like, where in the hell – I got two things. Okay, we've taken the head out of the game. Agree. Taking the head out of the game. Mm-hmm. We've taken the knees out of the game. Now mm-hmm. we're taking the waist out of the game. So are we just going to start drawing little little bullseyes on people's chest and this is the only place that we can tackle the person now? That's one. And we're going a little bit too far here. And then two is this, is I feel very confident that any human being that's ever played the game, that's played on the defensive side of the ball, and you know, though I'm an offensive guy, I play defense coming up. Mm-hmm. How are you supposed – somebody just explain it to me and I'll shut up. How are you supposed to tackle somebody from behind? I guess you're supposed to try to dive at their ankles. So now, but that's what I'm. We're just creating other injury spots. Okay, I mean, like if I go and run and go, you don't think we're going to get high ankle sprains and blown out knees by diving behind people at their diving from behind at their knees? Yeah, I mean, and <clears throat> like let's talk about like Mark Andrews, the one that he got hurt on would be considered a hip drop tackle. If that was not if he wasn't hit like that, you're not getting him down. you got to prevent them. He's getting tackled at the two-yard line. If you hit him at the ankles, he is going to go forward for and score. That's the only way to prevent him from scoring. Um, plays on the, like, on the perimeter on the outside. Like Pete Carroll actually started teaching this, like the gator roll and all that stuff to get away from head injuries. Like it was the crazy part about it. This is about six, seven years ago. This was applauded to being a big, you know, Pete Carroll's of the world were being applauded for saving head injuries by teaching people how to tackle like this. Now we're taking it out of the game. I'm just, I'm a little, I'm against it. I, I don't think it's very realistic. And, I mean, you're, you're now on perimeter plays, you're going to have to have a linebacker. All right, Derrick Henry on outside. Derrick Henry loves it because on outside zone balls, they got to they gotta go, they got to either go straight at his ankles, which he'll, he'll just, pick his feet up and go, or if they hit him up high, he's he'll just run right through them. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's going to change the game now. I mean, drastically. And I mean. You, and you can't, and you don't have time to process either, Neil. That's the other right. part. Right. You're making defensive players think a lot. Instead can't of. Can't get them low, can't hit them high. I mean, it does make you wonder where the game's going. And I'm not saying this to be vitriolic or to be funny or anything, but I saw some NFL players say, just go ahead and put the thing around our waist with flags on. And you do kind of wonder if that's where it's headed. I'm being totally serious when I say this. I mean, I understand you're serious and you're probably, I do. I don't think it'll ever get there. They'll just continue. They're not going to change the game that much, but this, I mean, it's just, you're, you're, I just don't know what what do you tell a linebacker? What do you tell a safety? Well, what do you tell the 175 pound cornerback who encounters a 220 pound running back in space, or a, a tight end in space after he's caught the ball? What do you, how is he supposed to tackle him? I mean, he has to be in front of him, or you have no. Well, chance. even if in front of him, it becomes a different. If a, if you're having to really think about your hitting zone, and you're giving away 50 pounds. Hitting him square up in the chest is probably not going to go your Can't way. Can't hit him low anymore. So that's dirty too. So what do you do? I don't. I mean, I don't know. It's just I, I totally disagree. I understand why they did it because they're trying to protect their investment. And to be, I'm going to hand raise guy here. If I was an owner, hell, I, I get it. I do it. But at some point in time, you got to. I mean, that's just not very smart, and it's going to be impossible to. There's going to be so many judgment calls on this deal. And like, all right, let's talk. Let's talk about the horse collar, okay? When they took the horse collar out of the game, that's very easy to enforce. It's very easy to see. Yeah. And I've seen it. People get hurt on that. Mm-hmm. Okay. The hip drop tackle stuff. I mean, I think you're asking the referees, the officials. You're making the job, which was already brutally difficult, because the players keep getting stronger and faster and bigger. You're out there, number one, trying to officiate the game. Number two, trying not to get seriously injured yourself. And now you're asking them to make yet another determination in real time as to what something is. Yeah, I just... It's, it's very difficult. I don't know. I played for a long time on both sides of the ball, and I never saw something... I never got hurt or hurt somebody doing it. And I, I don't know. I just... <clears throat> I think it happens. The injuries are a lot less. Like, you take the percentage... 
of injuries that occur from the hip drop tackle compared to how many times it happens in a game. You get what I'm saying here? Like, yeah. it happens a lot, and there's not a lot of injuries compared to, like, the horse collar. Now, look, horse collar is – you can break a leg quick, break an ankle, high ankle sprains. Mm-hmm. And you can hear, too, but there's a lot that has to happen. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going – I'd like to see how many of those hip drop tackles, the injuries, the high ankle sprains and things like that occurred on turf as opposed to grass. Oh. Because there's a reason you get hurt on those things, and it's because you're getting you're getting stuck. So I'd like to see the I'd like to see the stats on that. I'm sure they're out there. I'll find them. All right, um, I mean, I'll just say again what I said. I, I I wonder where the game's headed, and I'm being legitimate about that. I I I have I have certainly have my own personal theories, but we'll see. We'll see what where it goes. I mean, if you told me that. I don't think it'll happen in my lifetime, but I, I mean, what else is left? I mean, we're getting there. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're definitely heading that direction. All right. Um, and the I haven't seen if this has passed yet today or not, but did you see the new uh, kickoff rule? I did. So this is the – We talked about it this morning. Did, so mm-hmm. it's, the, it's the XFL, what they did last year. Okay, so this is uh, – it's really – I wonder if – I should give them credit. Uh, XFL, this is what they did the whole year. I suspect they got the XFL to do it so that they could see what it looked like. <laughs> Probably. Um, it changes the game now. They want more points in the game. It changes it changes your roster a little bit too. Um, people well, like especially that. now because you 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 can't really tackle the fast guy any particular way, so he's going to run and score. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You got you got a two hand touch him. Um, it's it's turning kick off return into punt return is what it's doing. And so now the returner, the position of returner in the NFL had kind of gone away. Um, because in punts, they've got to where they hang the ball up there so long that yeah. you're fair catching. Mm-hmm. And then <clears throat> on kickoffs, held down there. I mean, they've gotten so good now. They're just booming out of the end. Just booming out of there. Um, this brings the – and the personnel that you need to run this play is different than a normal kickoff. It's going. You're going to have more uh, mid-skill players, so you probably will have to change your roster numbers a little bit on that. Definitely will have to carry a punt returner. So you're bringing that position back that's really, even in college, has gone away. Back in the day, you remember like Dante Hall, the human joystick. You know, um, uh, what's my my guy from the Bears? Uh, Devin Hester. Yeah. You know, you're bringing in uh, my guy at uh, the Cowboys that, that's the good returner now. Um, what's his name from TCU? Anyway, he you're going to bring those players are back in play and it's a it's a it's a very, I mean you can change games with that play. So, I think that that's that will be interesting to see if that 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 does get passed on. Um, I'm glad they did it this way instead of doing it. I was worried about because NFL kickers are so good, dude. Yeah, they're, like they're incredibly skilled. The hang time part is not going to matter as much anymore because if you said, "Hey, you can't have touchbacks," and you start, they start hanging them up there, you're going to create collisions. Uh, good. And the Cooper Chevrolet chat said, "Turpin, thank you. That's the guy from the uh, Cowboys. He's a beast." But you bring that back in, they'll increase with a, with a field position and things like that. They'll increase scoring because I know scoring has been down the last couple of years. Um, but I think it's because offensive line play. But that's my opinion. That's what I think too. I think it's offensive line plays deteriorated and defensive line play is better than it's ever been. Agree. And that disrupts everything from the timing of plays to everything. Yep. All right. I'm going to shift gears. We'll go to college a little bit. I want to talk about this. Um, I got this sent to me 46 times uh, because of the Joker. I'm not even bringing out the Joker today. So Deion Sanders, somebody wrote an article about, this is last week at some point in time, they wrote an article and in that article they were discussing it said, oh, Deion Sanders doesn't go on home visits. Okay, and it kind of died down. I mean, nobody even really talked about it anymore. I was just like, whatever. Well, then he has a press conference, and he addresses it Ken Mulkey style at the beginning of his press conference. He's like, I, I don't know if you're in here or not. You know, if you're in here, raise your hand, you know, like schools, whatever. He's like, I want to address that I don't go recruiting. And he was about – and I, somebody asked me on your board about it, and I feel I'm – very accurate saying this. He was about 25% accurate in what he said and about 75 full of shit. Okay. Okay. So here's what he said. He was like, like his winning percentage. <laughs> about, yeah, about right. He's actually, uh, I guess his win percentage would be, um, he's four and eight. So what's that? Yeah. That's 25%. Well, no, it's, it's 33%. 33%. All right. So he said that the first thing he said, 
was wrong because he shouldn't have said anything, okay? He's the head coach. It's his program. If he wants to go recruiting, go recruiting. If he doesn't, don't. You don't have to explain that to anybody. That's your program. As I say many times, they're going to keep score 12 times. Yeah, that's it. Don't You don't have to explain yourself to anybody. That's one. Mm-hmm. All right, so if I whoever his PR guy is said, hey, you probably need to address this, bad on you. No, he doesn't. He can do whatever the hell he wants to do. It's his, it's his team. So you're going to win or lose. He's, you're going to win or lose. It's your yep, team. You keep, don't have to explain yourself to anybody. They're going to keep score. So – I, he doesn't need. He didn't need to do that. All right. So the accurate part that he said was, he was like, "Hey, he he said, you know, with the portal and all that stuff." He goes, "It's about can you get me to the NFL and how much money are you going to pay me?" Check. Ding, ding, ding. I mean, I think he's right there. You're accurate. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. All right. I'm with you, Dion. Okay. In the press conference, stop it right there. And if he stops it right there. Nobody says another word, and they're like, man, that's pretty, that's pretty sharp. But he had to keep going. And he goes, then he starts to try to explain himself where he starts getting into the full shit territory. Where he's like, you know, if I go to, if I go to this school, then, you know, the school down the street, they're going to be mad at me that I didn't come by. No, Dion. No, that's not how it works. Do you not, like, do you think Nick Saban didn't go out recruiting because he was worried about what the team down the street was mad at him because they didn't stop by? No. You go where the players are. Absolutely. Every, every high school coach in America understands that when the, when the head coach comes out, you got one stop. You don't have time to do a bunch of PR stuff. You're going to where the players are. Mm-hmm. So you take your 50 to 75 guys that you're wanting to go see, and you go see those guys. You don't have to do PR stops. You're not an assistant coach. Mm-hmm. Okay, That's what assistant coaches do. They stop by all the different schools and, hey, just checking in, yeah. saying hello. You stop by in the area, whatever. You know, We call them PR stops, whatever it is. They may not have a player. You're going to go by and see them. That's what the assistant coaches do. So that's bullshit. So save me on that one. All right? And then, <clears throat> and then he talks about, he's like, you know, you know, in the portal guys, you know, I don't need to go see those guys. Well, here's where you're wrong. All right? So I'm going to explain this, and I've said this a hundred times. Nobody, you, everything's equal. You better have a relationship if everything's equal. If you're going to do that, if you're not going to go visit kids, you're not going to go visit the port, whatever, the guys you're going to sign, whatever it is, you better have a better package financially than everybody else, and then you're going to win. But when things are equal, you've got to have something that separates you. And so, I, he kind of lost me with all that bullshit there. I'll tell you what. The little freshman point guard for Notre Dame, she is a dynamic player. Hidalgo, Hannah Hidalgo, Hidalgo is her name, I believe. She's, she's, I like her. She's something else. Just my observation. I've, watched, okay. I've been watching this game so that we can talk about it tomorrow. I've been keeping my eye on it. You got it recorded? Uh, no. God, no. Um, I mean, no. Look, she at, goes look again. at her. There she goes again. I mean, she is. I could have made that shot, though. But, I mean, her, she has great instincts. I'm just joking. Yeah, she has good. great instincts. She really understands the game. She's she's a terrific young player. Yep, no doubt. All right, and then um, he added this, too, in the same press conference. Okay, so they were asking him about Shador Sanders, <clears throat> and they were asking him about Travis Hunter. And he said that they were going to pull an Eli in next year's draft where they were going to pick where they were going to play and I mean, not the other way around. He's not good enough for that. Like, what are we doing? Well, I mean, I don't understand it. Shadur Sanders is not going to be a number one overall pick. And by the way, and, and I'm, not, I'm not here to defend Eli Manning for the gazillionth time, but I know something about this. The source that told the Mannings not to go to San Diego – was pretty damn high up in the Chargers organization. That wasn't just Eli not wanting to go to San Diego. That was doing their homework and discovering that it was not ideal as opposed to the Giants who were pretty ideal and who wanted Eli very much. The Giants really wanted Eli Manning. And it worked out. He won two Super Bowls. He played his entire career there. No one ever tells that part of the story. No. He it worked out. He won two Super Bowls. He played his whole career there. He's 
His number's retired there. He's like Mr. Giant. And think about how storied of a franchise that is. How many great players have played for the Giants? Back forever. And he's maybe the most popular Giant. It worked out. In the Cooper Chevrolet chat, Doors Rules, good question here. I don't know this um, unless you know it, Neil. I haven't seen anything on this, but that is a great question. He says, so is the onside kick dead now with a new with a new kick? Um, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I know in the uh, XFL they did like – it was like third and 15 or something from your own 35 was like the onside kick. You had one down to get 15 yards, I think yep. what it was, instead of an onside kick. I would actually like to see that. That would be – that's a that was a fun addition to the end of games. Yeah, one down to get 15 yards. They got to be a little careful in the NFL that you don't make it too cute. Like XFL, I'm all for making it as cute as possible. NFL, where the stakes are a lot higher. Yeah. I think you got to be careful that you don't over cute. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, it is fun. It is. I'm with you. In the XFL, it is fun to watch a team come back now. XFL gets crazy. I don't even know if these rules are going over mm-hmm. to the USFL to combine where they're calling to UFL. It starts this weekend, by the way. Um, where they had like the go for one, go for two, or you could go for three. Like I, I like the – it's you're never out of the game. And if you bet on point spreads in those games, yeah. it, it, gets, it gets nutty. Well, again, in, in, that, in that league I – mean, I'm being repetitive here, but it, it, in that league, the cuter you get, almost the more fun it gets. You're yeah. trying to get people to watch professional football in March and April. They're yeah. not conditioned to watch professional football in March and April. They're conditioned to watch professional football starting in September. So if you get them to watch it in April by making it, oh, man, hey, hey you, you got to see this. They can go for four here. What? You know, that's how you get people to watch that stuff. You've got to make it gimmicky. The NFL has to be careful that you don't become too gimmicky because the NFL's, the hey, NFL. we play great football. We're the greatest football players on the planet. Speaking of, Neil, you know what else they're not going to do in the NFL? I don't. They're not going to go un- unlimited free agency and unlimited salary cap anytime soon. April 15th, Neil, is quickly approaching. Oh, I know where you're going. And I heard Josh, I'm going to give credit where it go- belongs. Josh Pate, who I'm a big fan of, does, does great work. He cited an anonymous coaching source. He was embedded okay. with a team or talked to someone at a team. And the coach was saying, it's one of the reasons I wrote what I wrote in 10 Weekend Thoughts today about spring football, which is kind of like, it's never really meant less. People go, why do you say that? Well, here's why. You got guys on your roster that are going through spring right now that you know aren't going to be there soon. And you already know who you're replacing them with. And so, so Jordan Watkins, it was a slip. It was a Freudian slip. Jordan plays wide receiver for Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. Very charismatic young man. This will be his third year at Ole Miss. He transferred from Louisville. Clearly one of the leaders of the team. Is very good at recruiting his peers to come to play for Ole Miss. And he goes, yeah, you know, he was asked about how, you know, the role he played in getting some of the guys in the portal to come to Ole Miss. Blah, blah, blah. And he slipped and said, looks like I'm going to be doing a lot of that again soon. Something along those lines. Meaning we're about to go back into the portal and add. I mean, we don't even know who's going to I mean. The reason spring football is less irrelevant today, like when you keep you say that a lot and people don't, they like, oh, Neil, you're just being hyperbolic. No, here's why. As a football coach in the spring, the guys that you know you're going to – it's about – spring are, used to be about developing players, okay? And so how – as a coach, how I attack spring football my entire career. If I know Neil, Neil's a returning starter. Congratulations. Thanks, man. He's been playing for me for two years. He's been playing 50, 60 plays a game. There's I know no, the system. There, there's nothing the you're plays. going to do in the next 15 days that's going to change my opinion about you. Right. All right, so are you going to get some reps? Yeah, we're going, sure. we're going to trot you out there. You're going to get your couple reps, but, like, you are going to come sit quickly. Yeah. And I'm going to take the guys that I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to put them in my rotation or not. I'm going to run those guys with the ones. Now – you can put a good quarterback in there and let because quarterbacks aren't going to get hit, right? So they can get good reps, good on good reps, verse with a quarterback. And I'm, I'm talking about receiver play, right? And I'm going to play in my ones are going to be guys that I'm seeing if they can play in my rotation come the fall. Mm-hmm. Well, in today's world, those guys that you're talking about doing that, they're not going to be on your team. 
They're like, hey, I ain't going to be in a rotation. I'm going to go transfer and see if I can get, be, the, be the guy somewhere. Sure. All right, and then I'm not going to go, hell, I don't need to figure out if you're going to be in a rotation. I'll just go get somebody that I know can be in the rotation. Yes. So that's why spring football is useless because the you're protecting the same players. That has never changed. And then you're not developing anybody because why would I develop you if you're not ready to go now through all the fall? Like fall is I, your development time. I think you were about to see the end of the spring game for two reasons. Oh, 100%. For two reasons. One – you don't want to if you got to divide it up. Now you got to go okay, if you don't start in the spring game, you now you know you're a third teamer. You do not want to identify where they are on depth chart at any cost. At any cost. And then if you play your guys in a spring game and it's on TV and people watch it, they're like, "Hey, hey, hey coach, who's 82 over there for uh Furman?" Yeah. Did y'all see that kid go for like 170 the other day? Well, no, it's it's like, "Tell me a little bit about that guy." And then all of a sudden you're you're tampering. You you don't want that. So it they're gone. Yeah. They're gone. The regular season has never it's never been more this sport has never been from a coverage standpoint been more about the 12 games than it is now. Yeah. It's the whole I've had people, not many, most people I get it. Most people listen to me and I think they they, they realize that it's not about laziness. Like you're just being lazy. I get that a little bit. No. You would prefer to not be. You would prefer well, to be covering it because you give you something to cover. Well, like I said, I'm never going to complain about access. But like, I get where coaches are like, "Hey, look, I don't mind if the reporters come out here, but I don't need them reporting about depth charts. I don't need them reporting about who's doing well and who's not doing well. I really don't need them reporting about uh, injury status, and that's why someone's getting number two reps or whatever. So, in other words, you want to put all these stipulations on my job? Yeah. I don't want to do that. That would be like me telling a coach, hey, I want you to call your offense, but I don't want you to run between the tackles. Also, I don't want you running flood concepts. Um, oh, and uh, your backup running back, he can't play. Okay. Now, those stipulations, are you good with that? He'd be like, no, 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 you're hamstringing me. Yeah. Well, when you make me out as a reporter, I'm wearing a credential, media credentials, only reason I'm there, and I can't do my job, that's fine. I'm cool with it. Just close it. We've had this conversation. Yeah. I've told I've told coaches this. If you're going to put a bunch of rules on what I can write and not write from your practice, just close the practice. Don't ask me to come out as a reporter and I can't report. Yeah. Because now it's not fair to you, not fair well, to anybody. Well, now I don't want to be there. Yeah. Because I, I'm not coming out there for my own. And it puts you in a bad spot. Yeah. And I'm not coming out there for my own. And then what, what do I do? I go out to a practice and I see a bunch of things and I have to go, okay, no, wait, did that violate rule two, rule four? And then I'm getting a call from media relations. Hey, why did you write? Oh, did that violate? Just no, no. just close it up. Yep. And you're going to play on Saturday and you're either going to win or you're going to lose. They're going to keep score and we'll go from there. And I'm talented enough as a writer and a reporter. Now, let me, let me talk to players, bring players in. We can talk to players. We can ask some questions. I'll figure it out. We'll make some content. We'll, we'll go from there. But, yeah. but it, I think spring football, if you will, at the college level, is on its way out, and I think it will be replaced with an NFL-style minicamp deal. And then the way that the college systems work now, the, you know this, the guys are all, as soon as the Memorial Day weekend is over, on that Tuesday, everybody's on campus, and they really don't leave again until the two or three days that they leave. Get a little break for August. And you get a little break at the end of the second summer term, and then you show up for yep. preseason camp, and you know the rest. All right, so unless Josh and I have talked to the same people, um, obviously I talk to people every day, not necessarily about this, but sometimes the conversations get away from my, what I usually do to, to this. Uh, coaches are expecting a complete shit show from April 15th to the 8th, April 30th. Um, why? Because of the double transfer. Mm -hmm. wasn't really in play. Nobody knew what was going on during the first uh, transfer window. Now they do. Mm -hmm. um, the tampering, if that's what you want to call it, um, I guess we don't have another word for that, but the tampering is out. It's, 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 he said, look, tampering was already bad. This was the quote I got. Tampering was already bad, but it's, it's on steroids right now because it's not you used to be able to protect. You knew who was, you could had a smaller number of people that yeah. were getting tampered with. Yeah. Now it's everybody. It's everybody. No, now coaches like, okay, we need a running back. Let's take a look. Or we need an offensive tackle. Or we need a linebacker. We need a, this, let's take the best 15 and let's call. Yeah. 
It's out of control. And listen, if there will be fans who will like this, the ones their, that benefit, their team will get will add a guy and they'll be all super excited. This is bad for the game. Okay, <laughs> this is bad for the game. This this is. You can't convince me that most fans are going to like it this way. You you can't. You can't convince me. I think it will me. take a cycle, though. I think it's going to take a cycle, Neil, before everybody gets on board. Like, I'll tell you right now, we live in Oxford. Ole Miss fans love it. I know. Because they're benefiting from it. For now. I think it's going to take a cycle for of now. everybody to get their yes. teeth kicked in by it until everybody's like, wait a minute, this thing sucks. Even that, it's just... We haven't been around long enough. Your roster, if, if what make I don't know. I, I'm 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 convinced I'm wrong on this because I'm one of these people that I went to three schools and I really don't care anything on any. I don't mean this in a bad way. Yeah. I don't have any allegiance to any of them. Mm -hmm. I don't have any heartstrings attached to any of them. So it doesn't mean anything to me. The sports that I enjoy covering, I mean not covering, cheering for, watching, following, even like the U.S. men's national team yesterday. Played Mexico in the CONCACAF. Conca Cup. Conca Cup. How do you say it? That's a word twister. You, twister. You are following the progress of players that have been on the U.S. team for a period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, Tyler Adams had a big-time goal. It was his first start in 400-and-something days. He's been part of the program, but he had an injury and all this. You are following progress of people. The Thunder last night played in Milwaukee and just got skull drugged in the second half. And you got to see, oh, okay, here's – now that you're on the radar, Giannis showed up to play in the second half, and he took Chet and everybody else to school. And that was a moment you're like, okay, next year, how do they adjust to this? Right. That, that kind of thing, right? You get to have that. To me, that's what makes sports interesting. A complete overhaul of the roster, unless you're someone who is – so in love with the school that when anybody wears your team's laundry, damn it, you love them. And that's fine. I'm not criticizing. I've made a living covering that. But unless that applies to you, and I just don't know how many people that truly, maybe I'm wrong. I think I am wrong. But if that's it, I think the sport pays. I, th I, think, I think the sport pays. Even at Ole Miss, right? When I first got here, it was 2008. That team had been shitty under Orgeron. Houston Nutt comes in, and the same kids who had lost suddenly started winning. You weren't just excited that the laundry was winning. You were excited that who was on that team? It was Dexter McCluster and Paray Jerry and, uh, uh, I don't know, dudes, guys, but who had been there for a minute. Yeah. They'd been there, uh, Cassius Vaughn. Uh, there were guys that were on that team who had – played on Ole Miss teams that sucked. And suddenly they were winning, and they were good. They go to Florida and win, come back, lose to South Carolina, but then they go to Alabama and almost win, and then they go to Arkansas and they win, and they keep winning, and they, they go to LSU and have this kind of breakout performance. Well, it was the same dudes. You weren't just cheering for the red jersey. You were cheering for the people inside of it. And when you take that away, and we're starting to take that away, when you take that away in mass, I just think the sport's going to suffer. Maybe I'm completely no, wrong. I think you're a hundred percent right. I think it's going to take, like I said, I think it's going to take a cycle of everybody going that the people who are that love it right now are the people who are benefiting from it. But when you go and have to rebuild your roster, okay, all right, let's just throw this out there, uh, just hypothetical, okay. Ole Miss is going to have to do some roster retooling after this coming season. A ton of it, okay. They're going to have this all this money, and they're going to go try to retool it. Well, what if it doesn't work this time? Now you're not going to like it. You, now, But you've invested well, the I'm, same I'm amount a, of money, and but I'm it gonna go, work. I'm going to go on the other side a little bit. Let's name some SEC teams that we, we feel pretty confident are going to suck this year. Um, Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. Arkansas. Arkansas. I think they're going to be pretty bad. Okay. Um, maybe South Carolina. Got a chance to be bad. Quarterback propped him up last year. Anyway, the point. Get, yeah, but go okay, ahead. Point. Here's the point. Let's just go with those. Let's forget Vanderbilt. Let's go Arkansas and South Carolina. Okay. If you're a fan in this economy, you go. My team's got no chance. This system. Meh. Are you are you buying the tickets? Are you are you truly invested like you used to be? 
Okay, so you, let's say you're an Arkansas fan. You're a South Carolina fan. You check out. This fall, you don't really follow it like you used to. Maybe you watch it on Saturday a little bit, kind of, but you're not in it anymore. Hey, all those dudes, Tyler, they're not coming back the next year. Do that two or three years in a row, and all of a sudden people are like, yeah, I used to go to the games. I used to follow it. People go, oh, who are you a fan of? Well, I mean, I'm a South Carolina fan, but I hadn't been in a while, and you know what? I don't miss it. Yeah. It's, it's that, that, hey, that happens. Yeah, it's going to happen. You know what I did? I started, I started following the Panthers more. I got into the Panthers. Yep. I got into the Cowboys, the Texans, the whatever. And before you know it, that's where you're, it's, mark my words. No, I, I think you're 100% accurate. All right, let's, let's flip to some basketball. Because, because when you suck for any period of time and people, this is why the NFL works. Your NFL team that sucks, there's always a chance because of the way that the league is structured that you are going to stop sucking. <laughs> yes. Like the Bears. They were bad the last few years. Houston. Houston. They, they got um, CJ. CJ Stroud. The Bears are about to get Caleb Williams. That's going to be hope. Well, if you're South Carolina, if you're Arkansas, there's no draft. You take hope away, people go, ah, I'm not doing this anymore. And then you don't know the players. And now it's just, yeah, I mean, I, they're wearing the uniform, but I have no idea who that is. No, I, I don't think that's good for the sport, but maybe I am completely wrong. I don't think anybody can say it's good for the sport. It's just a shit show. All right, uh, let's shift gears. We'll do a little college basketball, and we'll get out of here. Uh, did you see where the – speaking, since we have the women's tournament on, we'll get inspired here by some women's basketball. Did you see where the official Tommy Paris – that is a lady, Tommy – was removed at halftime of the NC State-Tennessee-Chattanooga game because of uh, a conflict? I did, not, I did not know this until you okay. said it today. This is great. At halftime mm -hmm. of the NCAA tournament mm – -hmm. Between NC State and Tennessee Chattanooga, okay. they realized that one of the referees graduated from Tennessee Chattanooga, and they pulled her from the game at halftime. Son of a gun. Okay, so I got all kinds of issues with this. One is, hey, guys, like, where did she go to school? Probably should be on the application. I mean. And somewhere when you're putting officiating crews together, you should probably go, hey, that, uh, that person can't uh, – she has officiate a, that game. What does she have? A master's from there? Master's or from, from Chattanooga. Tennessee, Chattanooga. Okay. So, and then two, so it's really bad. And then on her to go, when she gets assigned that game, she has to go, hey, I can't hey, do this. Just, hey, hey, guys, is I've there another it, crew? I've got, I've got a degree from there. Yeah. Can't do that. That'd be like me <laughs> if they assigned me to a ULM game. I'd be like, I can't do this. I mean, I, they're, they're, they're my world. I, just, I mean, I would have to say, hey, I have a master's from there. This is going to be. Yeah. It's going it, anything that could possibly happen could end up looking like a conflict of interest. Yeah. It's not that she couldn't call the game objectively. She probably doesn't give a damn. She probably cares much more about calling the game accurately. But if she misses a call, someone could go, "Well, that's what happened and you can't afford that." No. That's just bad on both parts. I mean, and then the wait till halftime and go, "Oh, I know she's already called a half, but let's just let's let's and, that and makes so it that worse. makes you want to go back and look at the first half. Like, Who won the game? Uh, uh, I'm assuming NC State because they're playing. The okay, thing. there you go. So it all worked out. So it all worked out. But how bad is that? All right. Um, I'm going. I want to touch on this very briefly. I'm sure y'all talked about this morning. I was busy. I didn't get a chance this morning, so I apologize. All right. This Kim Mulkey versus the Washington Post um, thing that came out of the weekend. Um, Neil's best friend and brother. Uh, Pat Forty decided he wanted to take credit off somebody else's work, I guess, and try to get his clicks and interact in media, uh, social media interactions. Y'all got dinner set up next week? Uh, yeah, we're going okay. Tuesday. Is that at the uh, Razorback Foundation Club collective? It's dinner? well, it's at the uh, what, uh, what, what are we calling it? The Edge, Arkansas Edge. We're meeting there and giving. Okay. We're tithing. Tithing. Okay. Yeah. For the baseball team, I only baseball. I only give to baseball. All right, I give I give basketball to Florida. Yes. Yeah. And I gave him more after this week. I felt like we got close. I felt like we got robbed against uh, Colorado. And so I'm, I'm upping my donation. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Um, there's a lot of people that have God. opinions on Kim Mulkey. God, I, can't that right. <laughs> I don't understand where being a nice person became a prerequisite into being a good coach. I said this this morning. Is that what you said? Yeah. I, I, I mean, just, I, it really bothers me. 
Um, this isn't to say that all coaches are, are bad people or, or they're mean or crazy, but look, there's a lot of great guys and a lot of great people, but not all of them. And okay. I, I was, I probably did some things and I probably have some players that are listening and probably shaking their head right now. I probably did some things where you go, man, that guy's an asshole. Okay. But when you're coaching 18 to 22 year old people that all of a sudden have gone from no name to a national name, there's, you have to be able to hold players accountable. The new system that we have created with this unlimited transfer is now you, you are almost forced to be their friend instead of being their coach. Mm -hmm. I give her, I don't care about her character as far as is she a nice person. I'm not trying to go to dinner with her. Okay. She's getting paid to win basketball games. That's what she gets paid to do. You're saying you wouldn't go to dinner with Kim Mulkey? No, I wouldn't. Um, or I, I would. I don't know. I just, that's not what I'm attempting to do. Aaron here. might not like that. Yeah. Aaron probably wouldn't like it. She's 61, though. So I think we're good. I mean, I'm the one that. You would probably be in more danger than I'm, I would. I'm be. the one that got hooked up with Nancy Pelosi just Thursday night. So, I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> that Who knows? was. All kidding aside, I got a couple <laughs> texts on that. They were people worried about you, Neil. All right. Um, is less than one minute of my life, man. <laughs> that was the other thing is why would it only be one minute? But anyway, we we digress. Um just I don't gotta care. concentrate. Yeah. <laughs> Golly, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you, man? All right. <laughs> I don't care, but I don't I mean, who gives a shit if she's a nice person or not, or all this? This is so politically driven by her stance in COVID. We all know what this is about. Is it COVID or is it some of the other stuff? Well, that that that's in there too, but this all started with her taking the stance. This whole report started the, the investigation report of, or whatever you want to call it two uh -huh. years ago when she didn't want the players to be tested anymore. She went public and all that. That's oh, when all started. That got everybody worked up. It got everybody worked up. And this has been going on for two years. Um, I do agree with her. It's a chicken shit move to, to demand uh, quotes as you're getting ready to go, I mean, it's been going on for two years, the timing. I get why they do it. They're if, getting their clicks and all that, that shit, but that's chicken shit. I mean, I know the reporter in question. If if that indeed happened, then yes, it is. I, I, I have a feeling that the truth is somewhere in the middle on some of this, but regardless. Yeah. Look, but it's not about – I will say this. Good for her for standing up. Like, she she will she's, she will fight it. Um, She will – and, and and good for her, but who cares? This is a nothing burger. If you if it's coming to tell me she's a bad person or she's got, I have a feeling this is going to be a very political, uh, disagreeing with her political stances on a couple things. Yes. Um. And okay, that but that's not a re prerequisite to coach football games. Mm -mm. All right. There's a lot of people that are really bad people that are coaching sports. Right. Well, now. here's the part that that are winning games. Here's the part where the media is wrong. There's a lot of people in the media who are really bad people too. And the, exactly. And so, you know, that and the media doesn't hold them to that standard because they're media. Yeah, I'm just I'm just not I think more coaches like me than media like me, which tells you something. Like if you were to like if you were to poll 100 football coaches who I've dealt with and 100 media people who I've dealt with, I think I'd get a more favorable score from the football coaches than I would the media. I don't know about the media side. I've said this from the football <laughs> side before we were friends. Yeah. Here's the difference between you and the media that I like. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty simple with me is that, and our, I, I always, as you said, you, we've attested on this podcast. You said, I always tried to help y'all do y'all's job. Okay. If I had something that I know you were trying to get, Hey, if I can help you and we can find a way to work in the middle, let's do it. And that's why I really like, the beat. I know we got, I know everybody's got beefs with everybody and all that stuff. There was only had issue with one person ever yeah. on the Ole Miss beat ever. Yeah. Okay. Chase. I know, and, but it's, no. it's not Chase's fault, but he's just kind of, why did person. I have an issue with it? Because I felt trust was broken. Yeah. Okay. I'm being, I'm being serious. You just yeah. for a second. I know. All right. Everybody else I genuinely like as people. And why do I like him? Because I could say, Hey, Neil, can you sit on this for 24 hours? Look, I'm giving you this. Maybe I got something to do. You got something to do. You ain't got to come up here, Marla. This is who's coming. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to sit in a parking lot and play catch all day with the kids and all that stuff. This mm -hmm. is who's coming. This is the time they'll be here. So you don't have to be up here at six, whatever it is, right? Just let's th let's sit on it for 24 hours because of X, Y, Z. And you know what? Everybody on this beat but one would say, you got it. And they follow through with it. Yep. 
And when there's a level of trust there, then I then and if I and if I told you from the beginning, if you tried to because there was I think a couple of times you're like, hey, I need to tell you something about. Hey, before you do, let me tell you, I know about something. I need to ask about this. And if you were like, hey, can you sit on that? There was one time when I was like, I really can't. Yeah, I, I can't sit on it. I've got it, and I can't. It was cool. Yeah, as I don't long think as you were thrilled, but it was all right. Yeah, but I pr- it's the honesty. That is, to yeah. me, it's how yeah. it works both ways: communication, honesty. And again, it's just one person ever on this beat. All right. And then I've been called to do quote unquote hit pieces on coaches before. And some of them I didn't like. And I wouldn't piss on them if they were on fire. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I wouldn't talk. Yeah. I have nothing to gain. Right. Okay. So those kind of people that do those kind of articles, when you know that what the the end agenda is, if somebody's breaking the law, Neil, hey, I, I get it. Okay. You, you have no, if this article is about her breaking some law or do, okay, it's a different deal. But if we're just talking about her political side, like right. just save me on that shit. Right. I don't care if she's the worst person on the planet. Save me on that shit. Agreed. All right. Um, I've been threatened by my family to make sure I include this in our podcast today, by the way. Okay. First weekend of the NCAA March Madness is this weekend. In case you didn't know that. It's though. in the books. It's in the books. Yep. Um, I will go on record and letting you know that I have guaranteed have never watched as much college basketball as I've watched this year. No doubt. I mean, it's not even up for discussion, not, with, even with myself. Yes. Uh, with that being said, I've never felt more prepared for a bracket than I was this year. The tournament's different, dude. And never in my life have I done as bad as I did in the bracket. I'm talking about I couldn't pick my nose for the first two rounds. <laughs> it was, I literally, I hit 50%. Oh. Just winners and losers. It's and not good. That's not good. It's not good. Not good. Like the upsets I was picking got crushed. And the ones I was like, ah, oh, they'll be, they're gonna get them. They got crushed. It was just, it was embarrassing bad. So uh with that being said, the we had some, hey, we had some people, the criteria club. I'm gonna bring this up. We had some people that started doubting the criteria club. Thursday and Friday, oh, wow. where they were like, Oh, I'm I'm not doing this anymore. It's it hasn't done me well. I'm not doing this anymore. And they bolted on us Friday. Yeah. But they missed on a win on Saturday, and they missed on a win on Sunday because they quit. It's about believing in a process. Rule number two of Criteria Club is you never quit the club. You understand that occasionally there will be a bad day. You but it's about, it's about the process. It's about consistency. Process. If you're training for a marathon, there will be some days in the, in the training when you don't feel good. And you, you, you want to quit. But you have to grind it out. And you get your run through, and you at the end of it, you're like, okay, that, today was a bad day. But sure enough, the next day is better because you did your work. You have laid the groundwork. You did it. We hit a plus 200 and something on Saturday and plus 300 and something yesterday. Congratulations. So, hey, Very if happy. you rode with your boy, mm-hmm. you ended up on the plus. Yeah. It's just you got to ride. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So, my I, all kidding aside, I, watched, I literally watched every single game. My setup in my man cave was like, built for March Madness. I got four TVs and I had, I, I literally was spent way too much time except for Saturday when I was on my phone, but, um, I watched every single game. Um, my big takeaways is I think we collectively as a sports fan base. So that's everybody that watches basketball. I think we all owe the ACC and the big East an apology. Okay. Because they got, they got between them combined, they got eight teams in in the tournament, and seven of the eight are going to the Sweet 16. Yeah, it's pretty strong. All of the Big East is going, and the one team out of the uh, ACC that didn't make it was Virginia, and they shouldn't have got in to begin with. Yeah, But let me tell you who would – I'm convinced would still be in the tournament if they had made the tournament. St. John's. St. John's. Yeah, I think you're right. They got screwed. They were playing well. Um, but the ACC and Big East, seven of the eight are still in. Uh, Clemson, I mean, they they played really well this past weekend uh, with two convincing wins. Um, and then let's talk a little bit about our good friends at the Southeastern Conference that hit the struggle bus at the NCAA Lost tournament. Lost some close games, but yeah. They did. There were some teams like Florida, okay? I don't consider Florida hitting a struggle bus, but they lost by two. Colorado's playing well. Um, they lost by two. And that game could have gone either way. They just hit – they had two lulls, one in the first half and one in the second half where they allowed two big runs. Um, in the, one in the first half, one in the second half that cost them. They lose by two. 
Um, but like Auburn, dude, that was just that was tragic. What happened in that game? They were terrible. Well, they're one of their better players. Got kicked out the first three minutes. And that'll do you it. Agree with the call? Yeah. You think it should have been ejected or a flagrant one? I think you could have just done a flagrant one, but I had no problem with the ejection. You just can't do that. I agree. You can't do it. I don't, I don't know if you kick him out of the game for it, but it is I don't what know. It is. And they probably wouldn't panic because they all oh, will just win anyway, but they, they just started panicking down the end. So them, Mississippi State struck, couldn't get anything going on offense. They killed, they killed me out the gate Thursday. Um, they were just – they were bad. I'm trying to think who else was really bad. Texas A&M, hey, look, Texas A&M did not have to struggle bus. Texas A&M played their ass off. Um, probably the best game of the tournament so far was last night, Houston and Texas A&M. That was a great game. Probably one of the best games. And Talked to someone who was in Memphis at that game today, raved about just the environment was electric. Said it felt like an Elite Eight game. Yeah, that was that was awesome. And it was pretty cool, too, because, you know, they don't – they being in Houston and being in College Station, they probably have some – they have some old history. So, they were – and they had played a really good game early in the year on in December, a three point game. Uh, so that was a that was a good one. That's why I didn't mess with that one. I was a little weary of that one being so close, but um, Houston pulled that out. Uh, so Kentucky obviously collapsed. We saw that one live uh, Thursday night, and then um, Alabama. Here's the thing with Alabama. Alabama's got uh, they played better defense. They did. They played, they played better. better defense. They played better. Is it good enough to make a run? I don't know. Their game against North Carolina is going to be really interesting. It's going to be a super interesting game. Mm -hmm. If they come out, if they can, if they can, Luke Sears is unbelievable, by the way. Oh, yeah. No, he's a terrific player. I I, said that when they came to Oxford. I'm like, if you're looking for a reason to go to the game, just go watch him play. He's fun to watch. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got unbelievable court vision. I'm not sure he's Hannah Hidalgo, but he's pretty good. She's, what a game she had today. She's out now. Notre Dame's putting the finishing touches on a second round win, ending Ole Miss's season. But the freshman point guard for Notre Dame, wow, she's such a good player. Yeah. It's probably a, you could probably criteria club the old women's basketball tournament playing at home and stuff. Oh, you probably could. Um, if you do that next year, I will throw things at you. Uh, the It's against the criteria club, club rules. Sorry, ladies. Um, all right, so let's talk real briefly about the bracket, Neil. This is where I've been forced to remind everybody here. I'm about to, I'm about to pull up mine and see how I did. All right, so we have 422 people in the McCready and Siski bracket. Our leader after two rounds is Swash 200s. Swash 200 has 500 points. He is in the 98.7 percentile. Coach Nuke is in second. Coach Nuke, shout out to Coach Nuke. He is in second alone at 490, so he's only 10 behind. They both... The top three, and Jacob Simmons is in third, uh, tied with a whole gaggle of people. Uh, Jeff Neal, Duncan, Tyler Fitch, 22s, and I, Condor. I got 67.3% right. I have 430 That's points. your percentile of the country. That's not how many you got right. Oh. You got how many? Uh, let's see. How do I find how many I got right wrong? I don't know if it didn't tell you. I'd have to get on the computer and look. I'm on my phone. Um, but here's where I gotta I have to step up and bring this up. Okay, because I've been threatened by my family to bring this up. Yep. My man Brock, Lil Cisco is the bracket name. My man Brock, my 16 year old son, is in 13th place. And he is 40 points behind. He's got Purdue winning. My mother. My mother is also in 13th place, tied. Um, so she's grand. She's got Houston winning. She's in the 88th percentile. And then who else? Who else is tied for 13th, Neil? I don't know. My man, Knox. Is that right? He is tied at 13th, and he also he has UConn. So my, mo- my mother and two of my sons – are in 13th, tied for 13th place. I wish I could figure out how I did. I can't figure it out. Like, I have no idea how to find on this where I stand. It's not my favorite app, I'll be honest. Yeah, it's a tough, especially in ours. we got so many names, it's hard to find unless you're on computer. Um, So that's where we're at on the bracket. Um, Going into the second of three weekends. 
All right, Neil, we're going to hit you with this one. All right, little, little, uh, we've got about five minutes here. Thursday night, we got Clemson. I got 74% right. Okay. I think. That's, that's good. What I was trying to say. I don't know. Much higher than me. I'm done. Like I was cooked after Thursday. I'm done, done. We got Clemson against Arizona Thursday night, six o'clock. Um, the first two games, and at 6.30, we got San Diego State at UConn. Dude, UConn's – they're tough, man. I, I don't know. I don't know if they can – they just – they're good. Um, I'm going to study this game a little bit more. Clemson's playing really, really well. I wouldn't be shocked if Clemson won, beat Arizona. So, in the Elite Eight, I have – Oh, the Sweet 16, I've got three in the East still alive, two in the West, three in the South, and three in the Midwest. That's good. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, strong. 11 of the pretty, 16. Pretty strong. Yeah, that's good. It's All right. okay. We got Alabama, uh, I started to say at, Alabama versus North Carolina in the nightcap, along with Illinois and Iowa State could be the game of the day. Yes. Illinois Iowa State's probably the one of the two or three you-can't-miss-them games. Yeah, that that's – should be one of the best games of the day. Um, they are both of them are playing at an elite level right now. And then Friday we got NC State against Marquette. Dude, NC State just keeps on trucking, boss. Do they have one more in them? Marquette? I don't think so. I think it ends here too. Uh, we got Gonzaga at Purdue. It's a really good game. It's a really interesting game. Purdue has played really well. They have. But so has the Zags. They have. That should be a really good game. The Zags went like, so probably last month of the season, the Zags were like unconscious. And then they got beat by St. Mary's. And then they look like, I don't know if it's because they know each other so well or what the deal was, but Some they just, it. they looked human. That's a lot of it. And then they're back and they're playing well again. Um, they've been there. They're not scared of the moment. I'm telling you this Purdue thing though, they're so reliant on the two point. Like they're going to get analytic out of this thing in a game. I think that's what where it's going to come down to. Uh, too many mid ranges uh, for me. Um, Duke playing very well against Houston. This is one to watch now. We we I said this this morning. When people start making Duke Cinderella, be careful. They're really talented. They are. They've been I playing. Mean, well. I mean, the, the the Roach, the freshman, is very very good. Filipowski is a very good player. Just be careful with the whole Duke has no talent. Baloney. Duke can absolutely match up with Houston from a talent standpoint. It's it's stylistic, and Duke has to play well, and the young guys have to play really well. But that that's doable for Duke. Yeah. And then we wrap up Friday night nine o'clock with Creighton and Tennessee. Probably one of the most interesting matchups. Yeah, it's really really fascinating game. Dude, Creighton, have you watched much Creighton this year? Mm -hmm. First of all, if they are hitting their threes. Well, they're unbeatable. If they, hit, if, they, if they make their threes, they have a chance to win the whole thing. Yes. They are. That's why I've got them in the final four. When they, no, when they miss their threes, they're, they're. Well, that's almost got them the night. Yeah. They struggled uh, making threes. But, I think they were like six of 30 at one time. But Tennessee's not scoring the ball particularly that's, well. And so. Connects, he's, he's put together some str struggle bus games. He yeah. hasn't had well, a good game in a while. Everybody is super keyed on him right now. Yeah. He was forcing a little bit the other night. And I thought Zegor was terrific the other day. He's good. Yeah. I'd like to see – I like to watch him and um, Sears on the floor at the same time. They're fun to watch. But this Creighton-Tennessee game, um, I like Creighton in that game. Tennessee's actually favored. Um, so the Criteria Club parlays, I'm just letting you letting everybody give a heads up in case you're going to skip around me. I'm probably going to take a couple underdogs. Um, I kind of like Clemson to beat Arizona. And I like – I think I like Illinois. To beat Iowa State. What do you think about that one? Am I going crazy on that one? No. Iowa State's favored. No, I mean it's only favored by like two points. I don't. I don't you still get good money line. Odds. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't hate Illinois on that. I mean, I, I think Iowa State's going to win. But if you told me that I, that uh, Illinois won, I'm not surprised. Yeah, I like that. So that's all I got today, boss. All right, that uh, does it for the show. We'll be back on Thursday. We'll get you ready for the Sweet 16. We'll dive into some games a little bit more, maybe on Thursday. Um. Major League Baseball season starts Thursday. The Braves play Thursday or Friday? Uh, I'll have to look. I have no idea. I know they started playing like the real lineups this week in yeah. spring training, getting ready. Cubs play uh, Thursday night. Okay. Who do they got? Texas. Texas. There. 
Hey, what do you real quick before we get out of here? What do you think about? We got like sixty seconds. What do you think about this? Uh, how MLB teams like they're doing Paul Skeens and they're like when you get these rookies. Yep. And he should be the ace on their staff. Okay, but or in the in their starting rotation, how are you gonna but put? They're it? protecting his service year. But they wait till May or. It's the smart thing to do. I know, but isn't that kind of just? It is, but they collectively they, they, they collectively they bargain this, so it's it's they're going to do it. I mean, the Cubs did it to Chris Bryant. Braves Look, did it to Acuna. Here's the thing: if you're if you're Pittsburgh, the odds of you keeping Paul Skeens after his initial contract are probably not great. If he's as good as everyone thinks he's going to be, so this adds a seventh year as opposed to six. Orioles and are doing it with Holiday. Orioles are going to do it with Holiday. Now they're so good that he might not quite be ready. And Holiday was playing college ball, what, last year? He's a high school kid. Yeah, I mean, he's not ready. He's pretty damn good, though. So, I mean, he's hit everywhere he's been. He has. Every level. Yeah. And he's so, hitting the spring. He has. But he's, it's different when the season starts and you start getting scouted. So I don't, I don't object to them getting him some professional at-bats in a less intense environment. And they're a title contender. Yeah. I mean, I've got Braves, Orioles in the World Series. Okay. I like it. I can do that. Yeah. So. All right. We'll wrap it up there. Uh, again, brought to you by our friends at Rain Total Body Fuel. 300 milligrams natural caffeine, BCAAs, electrolytes, zero sugar. It's got what you need to push the limits and achieve your goals. Check them out on Instagram at Rain, Instagram, not Insta Rain, Instagram at Rain Body Fuel to learn more. For Tyler, I'm Neil. Talk to you guys on Thursday.